Hi guys, I'm Kay Smith and welcome to Outlier, where we share inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things outside of their comfort zone in a bid to help other outliers and entrepreneurs do the same. I'm joined by our founder and CEO, Andrew McComb, and today we're going to recap our latest episode with Quentin Nolan and go over our key takeaways from the interview. Hi, Andrew. How are you doing today? Hi, Kay. I'm great. Good to be here. Great. So do you want to start going over the key takeaways from the episode that we just launched last Friday with Quentin Nolan? Yes, great story of Quentin uh, from Liquid Snow Tours, which is now rebranded as Mountain Watch Travel. Uh, if you've missed the episode, you can watch it here. And if you want to catch up on all the other Outlier episodes, which you can watch for free, you can also catch up with those here as well. Uh, fantastic story, Kay. Essentially, uh, Quentin, as a 21-year-old, had been down to the snow with his mates and loved it so much, thought, well, what if I hire a bus and next weekend go down and bring a bunch of people with me. So that was his first foray. He hired a bus, went down from Sydney, down to Jindabyne here in, uh, in Australia. And essentially every weekend for that season or that ski season, took people down from not only his friends, but from local backpackers, etc. And mind blowing story, from that one sojourn into business the following year he he uh went to hakaba in japan which is a world well it is a now a world famous ski region and he took 40 people over on a one week tour um all from australia went to a tour he went there a few days earlier sussed it out hadn't been there before which is amazing and went with 40 people and then the following year he took back 400 people and now he takes over 8,000 people a year to predominantly japan he also runs tours to New Zealand, um, South America and Europe, but predominantly Japan. He's eventuated into having seven hotels um, and he has a, a snow machine, which is a big music festival as well. So it's just an incredible story of a young 21 year old following his passion. And ultimately for me, the key learning there is he went snowboarding with his friends and essentially he said to himself, how can I get paid to do this? He loved it so much. He was literally saying, how can I get paid to do this? It reminds me of myself when I started Golf Getaway, the world's only golf travel show. And I literally, I'd just taken up golf and I said, how can I get paid to do this? And so for the outliers and entrepreneurs out there, it's a really good question. If I had all the time and money in the world, what would I be doing with that time and that money? And so if I use Golf Getaway as an example, I wanted to travel the world, play amazing golf courses and share my experiences with other passionate golf and tourists. Similar with um, Quentin, he loved snowboarding and he wanted to share it with others who also had the same passion. So great question is how can I get paid to do this? And then use the other questions of if I had all the time and money in the world, what would I do with that time and money? And usually if it's gonna be business related, you also got to say that's also going to be of benefit to others. So I know it's a short and simple learning, but it's very, very powerful. And it's something that if you meditate on for a period of time, we'll come up with some fantastic answers for you, as it did for Quentin. Amazing. And something I take away from that as well is that, you know, being a 21 year old and, a, you know, 21, 22 year old and just having that gumption to go ahead and and create something so outlierish I guess you know going from Australia into an a, a then unknown place in Japan uh, working with the Japanese and their culture and everything else to then bring um you know all these tourists like so going from a small group to a to to be to huge groups um and what is it do you think about the essence of youth as well in that and that you know we, we talk a lot about limiting beliefs do they kind of accumulate over time? And is there something we can take away from the youthfulness of our, 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 our 21, 22 year old selves that can push us forward in business? Yeah, that's a really good question. Because obviously when we get to a bit older, if people are starting businesses at a later age, they tend to have um, security limitations called family or mortgages or whatever. But the beauty of, um, of being young at 21, I started my first business at 21 as well. And I, I remember for myself, and I'm sure, uh, and, and Quentin talks about this in his interview, is if he made a mistake 
he just learned from it and moved on, right? And, and so I remember when I first started, I didn't even think about the downside. I just wanted to do it. And I think why I wanted to do it was because I was so passionate about it. And you kind of, it's not a case of saying, like, how can't I do it? It's, it's how can I? And so you're always looking for that solution. And to me, any entrepreneur or outlier is really a solution-oriented person. We don't tend to look for problems. We're looking for a solution. And if we come up with a challenge, we're looking at a way around the challenge. Um, so I think for Quentin, he just learned very quickly from, you know, if he made mistakes or things weren't working, he just adjusted and, and adapted and, and moved around those and, and then just kept forging forward. Obviously with the burning passion to, to want to keep snowboarding for himself and have others experience this, um, you know, the beautiful power of snowboarding as well and skiing. Um, but again, like for the older people who, you know, may be wanting to start something now, but they do feel they have restrictions. The reality is you only get one life, right? So if you get to your deathbed, do you want to die wondering? And the other, so effectively people fear is, you know, of the, of the things that could go wrong. But the reality is if you're not doing what you love now anyway, then what's the problem? So I talk about this in the outlier coaching is usually what we fear the most already exists. So if it already exists and we're okay, then what we fear the most isn't going to be a problem for us. So I'll give you an example. If I fear, if I'm, I'm, I've got a mortgage and I've got say three kids and I'm say 45 years old and I'm worried that if I start doing what I love, uh, it's going to impact all of those things. Well, I'm going to ask you anyway, by not doing those things, how do you feel now anyway? So the reality is you're only going to feel what you're already feeling. So you might as well do it. And worst case, it can't get better than you're feeling now anyway, right? If those are the things, because the reality is if you're not, if you want to start a business, it usually means you want more than what you've already got, or you want to express yourself more in whatever way it is important to you. So if you're not doing that, that's a feeling of dissatisfaction. So I would say, what's, what's the risk? You're going to continue to feel the same way you felt if you don't do something. They talk about the definition of insanity is trying to do um, something over and over and, and get a different result. Well, that's essentially what you're doing if you don't do it. So I would say, do it anyway, like Quentin, learn as you go. But another good analogy is do something that's going to steer you and not sink you. So you're not going to throw all your eggs in one basket and know it's going to affect your kids and your mortgage or whatever, but just do something that's going to guide you. And as it proves itself more and more successful, do more and more of it. And that's a really good point with uh, Quentin. So when he first started in that first year in Japan, he took 40 people. And then the next year he had 400 people. So he had effectively grown his business by 1000% in one year. So, but he didn't go out like, and now he does 8,000 a year, right? So he doesn't, he didn't start with 8,000. He started with 40. So obviously start small and grow from that and, and then see what evolves from that. Yeah, that's a really, really great point. And also, I guess for many people, they might be looking at, okay, well, yeah, I have this idea and I have this, you know, passion, but there's still so much fear involved in going ahead and, and um implementing it and I think what you said earlier about you know really knowing what you want to do in terms of what would you do if I had all the time and money and I think it's very powerful to have that really clear and to write that down and to have that as your goal and to know what would you do if you had anything and you could do anything and then you can take those small steps to make to try and make that happen so whatever that big goal is if you have that in mind then you know okay it, the opportunity presents itself just to take that one small step you can take it. Yeah, and I'm going to go a little deeper on that, Kay, is essentially the reason you want to have, say, the business or whatever it is that you want is so that you feel certain feelings. And then the alternative is that is the what ifs. But the what ifs or the challenges or the things that could go wrong, what are they really? Again, they're just feelings that you don't want to feel. So the way I look at it, is if you're comfortable with the feelings you don't want to feel, and obviously how you get comfortable with them is just to feel them. And I promise you, if you feel them, they don't last very long. 
but it's also to make sure that the feelings that you do want to feel are where your attention is on more often than the ones you don't want to feel because our subconscious mind is like a heat seeking missile it was it will always aim or it will always hit what we're aiming at so if we're always focused on all the negative things we don't want to feel we're going to get more and more of that so if we flip that and we focus only on the things we do want and as you said if you sat down and wrote the answers to if i had all the time and money in the world what would i do and then start to take action and in alignment with those things you're going to start feeling more of those good feelings and like a snowball those feelings start to grow as you focus on them more and more. So that would be my answer to that. It's, it's just, you, you've really just got a feelings conflict. You've got the feelings you want to feel and the ones you don't want to feel. So really try and make the ones you do want to feel a lot stronger. And by, and how you do that is just put more attention on them. Okay. And that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Cause then if we relate that back to, to Quentin and the question that we, we spoke about earlier about being youthful and passionate then that just becomes automatic flow because when you're passionate about something and when you're living in alignment those feelings just get bigger and bigger and bigger and and, and the world that you want to create just opens up more naturally and i think what, what the, the next point we were going to go on to is about timing and also those timings then come just naturally that all of a sudden those opportunities just pop up because you're in alignment for those opportunities absolutely so really good point there. So two things that, that stand out for me was the location that um, in Hakuba in Japan was a real outlier in itself 20 years ago. It wasn't a large ski resort town. It was a it was world famous for its snow and, and the quality of, of the amount of snow and the dryness of the snow, but it wasn't a busy ski town like it is now. So the beautiful thing there is and just answering your question, so I have a like a like a formula. It says action times action times traction equals attraction, right? So if you look at each of those words, action, traction, attraction, it essentially means if I take action, I eventually get traction which then as I get more and more traction, it leads to more attra attraction towards me. So if we look at Quentin, he took action, right? He just did it because he loved doing it. So let's call the action 40 in the first year. He gained traction from that first year. And next year he had 400 coming with him. So now he's got traction. And then as he kept doing it, he starts garnering more attraction because more and more people want more and more of what the people who are going to Huckabar are getting called an amazing snow experience and they want it too. But what is the key with all of those three words? It's a, And the word applies in each of those words, it's action. Without the action, you cannot have traction and then you cannot get attraction. And if you look at the spelling of each of the words, they both, they all have the word action in them. So when you look at um, the beautiful alignment piece with Quentin, he's in, a, he's in Huckaba, which is a relatively unknown small ski town with beautiful, it's a perfect product. And he talks about it in his interview. It had the best or amazing snow, world-class snow. It was relatively underdeveloped. And so he started taking action in that space. And then what happened after that, and, and a lot of people, this again goes back to business, a lot of people, they go to an, a business and they literally try and start something that nobody wants. It's like uh, we talked about last week, Roger Hamilton, he talks about it in his message that it's best to go to the river and carve off your form of flow from the river. And the river's like where the market's already happening rather than dig a hole in the desert and try to start a river flowing to you. So if you look at Quentin's example of that, he had a literally an invisible river that existed called Hakaba. As I said, it was an outlier in its own right. And all of a sudden, through his action and bringing people to the town, things started to grow. Traction was garnered. Attraction started happening. Infrastructure started growing, hotels, etc. More and more people came to the region. Um, we talk about this and he talks about in his interview. From Australia, Jetstar and Qantas started flying. They started a route from um from australia to tokyo and then which hadn't existed up until then so he was literally riding a quest a crest of a wave um, of business growth 
And honestly, for, as a business owner, that would have felt so much better for him because people were coming to him as opposed to him trying to get people to come to him, you know, because they maybe um, didn't like skiing or they weren't interested in going to that area. He had all of them in one, it's all the ingredients in one, um, one region. And they talk about that. There's a book called, I think it's Red Ocean, Blue Ocean, where the red ocean's like when you're in a market and you've got so many competitors and it's like the red is the blood in the water, like everyone's fighting like sharks. Whereas the blue ocean is you're in this perfect um, point between your market and your, what you're offering are uh, meeting perfectly, but no one else is doing it. So luckily for Quentin, he was like the first of the people in Huckabee to start offering what he did. And he just rode the wave with it. And then obviously, and that brings us to our next point is that the vertical businesses that he integrated in relation to it. So initially he ran tours, but then he found he was running out of accommodation for not only his staff, but also for people coming because what was also happening on weekends is the Japanese would come from Tokyo and take all the accommodation. So he's going, well, I've got all these people coming, but they've got nowhere to stay. So initially he hired a lodge the first year he was there. And then the second year he ended up buying the lodge so he could dictate um, the hours and, and, and how long packages were, et cetera. But then he eventually in partnership with another operator ended up with seven hotels so that they could dictate who and when who could stay and when they could stay and then the beautiful vertical integrations of that they had the bars and the restaurants in the hotel so they would then funnel the people after their skiing would you know go to the bars and the restaurants so obviously from a business perspective he'd make more money he would then also um he, he also doesn't just work with his own hotel so he's still an agency with all the other hotels in the region he has to started to buy other hotels in other regions as well. And then he's also started Snow Machine, which is an amazing um, snow and music festival with uh, the last time they ran it uh, just pre-COVID was with 3,000 people sold out literally within a week. They sold everything out and they do it at a time of year where there's not a lot of tourism in, in, in Huckaba. So in the March period where it tends to taper off a bit. So literally they, they book out the whole town. But the beautiful thing about that is the integration from being tours to then accommodation to then bars, restaurants, and everything else. So he's really, I guess they call it squeezing the lemon to get every um, drop of juice out of it to, uh, to maximize you know, the revenue from each uh, person who's coming on those tours. So just a fantastic thing. If he's gone from, first of all, he's looking at his passion. How can I get paid to do this? Then he's in an amazing place with the perfect timing and then he's starting to integrate all of his um, businesses together as well. So they all spin off each other, which is just, it's literally the perfect formula for a great business. Yes. Amazing. And, and what I take away from that is that, you know, when, from my own, my own experience is that when the doors are, what you saying about the red, the red, um, so the red ocean, the blue ocean, you know, when, when the doors are open, they're open. And when they're closed, they're closed. And I think from people starting out businesses or wanting to do something else, or if it's in alignment or not, you can kind of tell if it's going to, if it's, if it's, if it's in alignment or if it's in your flow, if, if the ocean is red or if the ocean is blue, if you keep coming up with blockages and blockages and blockages, it might not be the right direction for you. Or it might not be, you know, you just need to pivot a little bit and then where, and then as soon as things starts opening up, you know, you're in that flow and you know, you're in that, you're in that alignment and things can, can escalate. And then what also I like about that is that, you know, as we said earlier, like Quinton's is 22 year old and he's gone from just taking some people on a tour business. And now all of a sudden he owns hotels, he owns businesses, he owns restaurants and music festivals. But when I'm listening to this story, I'm thinking this is one person who was young. He hadn't gone, he hasn't got all this business experience and done all these business courses. He just went with the flow and then attracted the right people to then help him along the way to build that, to build his um, verticals. Absolutely. Again, I keep going back to passion, right? So if you can find a market that has a similar passion to you and there's enough people in it. And for me, it was a, a classic example was golf getaway, right? So we would, and I knew there was a market because I knew there was a massive golf industry. But if I was so passionate about golf and I was addicted to it, 
and I could see it through my golf and travels. I knew others were too. So for me personally, it was great to people. I didn't need to do a lot of marketing because people were attracted to what I was offering. You look at Quentin as well. People love snowboarding. They love skiing. So it's not a hard sell. You know, they're already passionate. So to me, as always, the key there is the passion, but then making sure that your market wants the offer that you're providing. And if you can marry those two up, it's going to be um, rather a significant business. And in addition to that, and this is where it gets really important, this is actually my fourth point, Kay, is a really big thing for Quentin was the power of repeat business and the referrals he was getting. So if you look at the first year, he had 40 people to Japan. The next year, he had 400. That's a thousand uh, thousand percent increase those people came because those initial 40 had such a great experience they told their friends and their family and they came next time so what's a real standout for me in the way um, Quentin operates he's all about relationships so he has a thing it, so he has seven hotels right as an example if it means if his customers don't want to stay in his hotels, he's not going to make them or force them or try to coerce them to stay in those hotels. He wants to do whatever it takes to give the best experience for his customers, knowing if he does that, they will come back next time. They will tell a lot more people as they do and as they have, and therefore they're going to link it to his business. So that's where we go back to the alignment thing, right? His values are in alignment with his passions. His values are obviously looking after people. His passion is snowboarding and making sure everyone has the best experience. And therefore, the business starts to grow because of that. It, and he talks about it in, in the interview. He's like, I would rather look after someone really well than spend $1,000 on Facebook ads because he knows he'll get better business or more referrals from looking after people than he will through spending $1,000 on Facebook ads. So that was really a real standout for me. It's almost like making like making his own influencers, like making everybody an influencer. Exactly. And the they're company. raving fans, right? They just pumped on the snowboarding and the experience that they've had. And they go home. And, and the beautiful thing is, like you say, like an influencer, they'll have their own videos or their own photos. And then they tell all their mates about it when they got home. Then they want to go on the next trip. Where do we go next? And I used to have this with Golf Getaway. We'd go one place next time, right? Where are we going next? And then they go there, right? Where are we going next? It just becomes an ongoing process. So just, uh, it, again, I just feel pumped because I know how he feels with what's going on. And I, yeah, it's just exciting to see. And, I, and again, for the viewers sake, the young entrepreneurs and the young outliers out there, I know it takes a bit of maybe time and effort to plan that. But if you, we talked about it last week, if you're passionate and you have a talent in it, you're going to provide the most value. So if you're providing the most value, people want more of it, and then they're going to keep coming back to you. Mm. I think also what's important um, for me is about the relationships as well. Um, and I think personally, I, I kind of I believe this this did help with Quinton is the culture of the Japanese society and the way they do business. And just spending a lot of time in Asia myself and understanding how business works here. You know, in, in Japan, the culture of business is so deep that you, you know, you have to build these relationships and the way you work with the community and other business owners. I think this is really valuable for people all over the world's takeaway of, of how you nurture your surroundings, like say with other business owners, you don't have to have the whole market to yourself. If you're also supporting everybody else around you, it becomes a win-win for everyone. Well, I think that's the key point, um, Kay, is win-win. If you're looking to have a win-lose outcome, it ain't going to last very long. And, and the amazing thing with Asia and, and Japan in particular is business doesn't happen overnight there. It's a it's more of a traditional slower burn. They want to get to know you first to know that they can trust you. But once they do, like if you look at Quentin, he had it took time, but very soon he had the, all the ski schools on board. He had all the hotels on board. He had all the ski resorts on board. He had the bus companies that were going to Tokyo on board. He had the airlines on board, you know, Jetstar and, and Qantas. But it didn't happen overnight. It takes time. And the other thing he had on board was his staff. So he really looks after his staff too, knowing it's about a long-term play 
not a short term or a short, um, what do they call it, instant gratification play. And he talks about an interview. If you're going to go for that, it is not going to last long. So look for the win-win. And in all his scenarios, he's looking, how can the hotels benefit? Um, how can the ski resorts benefit? How can the ski schools benefit? How can the bus companies benefit? And if they're all winning, he's got to be winning at some point in there as well. Obviously, if he's not, then he's maybe not going to do business with those relationships. But at the end of the day, he's looking for that win-win at all times. And that's a massive um, I guess, a fundamental value that all entrepreneurs should have. Yeah, because even that works on the online space. I mean, a lot of the marketing um, gurus and, and learnings that you, you get from the courses say about the different, the amount of touch points that you need to make before somebody makes a purchase and about building the relationship. So, you know, we can really take away from this traditional way of doing business into the online space as well. And how to still you got to nurture, you know, it's not like I say, not an instant gratification, you know, relationships need to be nurtured and need to be built and knowing who your audience is and knowing what they want and how to communicate to them and how to make it a win win situation. I think it's very important. Absolutely. And I think if you look at that on paper, it looks like, oh, my God, that's a lot of hard work. That's going to take a lot of time. How's it going to make me money in the short term? Blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, if you look at the model that Quentin applied, and you just look at, first things first, you just need one customer, right? So how can you get one customer first and then look after them as best as you can? And then say, well, how do I add a zero to that? And then have 10 customers. And then once you've got 10, how do I have 100 customers? Again, look at Quentin, he had 40. And then he, well, initially he had 12, right? He went to a bus down from Sydney that sat seat at 12. Then he went to Japan with 40. And then next year after that, he has 400, right? So he just kept adding zeros. And the, the way he added zeros was look after people. He, he even talks about it in his interview. He, for the first three years, didn't even draw any money out of the business. He worked part-time at a bar at night to help fund the growth of the business as well. So, you know, he was willing to commit. And he talks about this as well. For three, he talks about it, for three years of his life, he had to fully commit to not receiving a lot for long term, never having to work for anyone else ever again. So ultimately, he he was he made the choice to put in the commitment for three years to maybe feel a little less at choice by having to work for someone else, but he knew it was for the longer term gratification that it's now giving him lifelong choice. So. I guess for me, Kay, the big takeaways, I'll just summarize it real quick because I know we've got another um, section we want to talk about today. But again, follow your passion and your flow. That's really, really important. Um, making money is a byproduct of offering as much value to others as possible based on what they want, not so much about what you want. But if you can marry your passions with their passions, it's going to make the, the situation a, a whole lot easier. Um, the other thing is just, like I just mentioned, is be persistent. Don't think it's going to happen overnight, but work out how you can support yourself in the short term to get that longer, longer term gratification. And in Quentin's case, it was about working in the bar and stuff. And then obviously the big one for me is focus on win-win. Win-lose is like a game of soccer. You know, that there's always a loser at the end of the game. But win-win is saying, well, how do, if I'm, doing a transaction with someone, how are they going to win? How am I going to win? Is there going to be a fair exchange of value? And make sure that all of your transactions have that uh, in throughout the whole process. As Quentin proved, he went from 12 on a bus to 40 to a tour to Japan to 8,000 per year, which then led to seven hotels plus lodges, uh, incredible relationships. And you can't, ultimately you can't lose that value if he was to lose everything tomorrow, he would not lose the connections he has and the relationships he's got and all the experience that he's garnered over the time. So that's the real value and the investment that you'd be investing as a young entrepreneur. Um, and if you're not up for that, honestly, and this is our theme for today, actually, if you're not willing to take responsibility within yourself, then don't do it. So, okay, that's my summary of Quentin's episode and obviously a good segue into self-responsibility. Great. Yeah, that was, I think the Quintin's uh, episode was really, in, really enlightening from, from these standpoints that we've mentioned. 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to going into now about taking responsibility and how that looks in our daily lives and our business. Yeah, so I guess if we look back at the, if I had all the time and money in the world question, what would I do with my life? Um, and assuming you want to now turn that into a business, you that is the first step in the process. You've got to start looking inward. We talked about it last week, questions are the answers. So you've got to start asking yourself some quality questions to start looking inward. And so it's essentially saying, once you've come up with your answer or your vision for what you'd like to do, you then still have to ask yourself, am I 100% committed to doing this regardless of what it takes? And we have a philosophy here at Outlier that says your external reality, be that everything that happens outside of your eyes, is a reflection of your internal reality. So if you want the external reality that you want, then it has to come from the inside. Now, what that really means is you are in control of the process. And how we control that process is we make sure our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs, and then our behaviors are in alignment with the reality that we'd like to experience. So again, the beautiful thing about that is we can control our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs, and our behaviors to make sure they are in alignment with that reality. So Kay, self-responsibility to me is essentially saying, well, if this is a reality that I want and I'm in tune with that internally, am I 100% committed to thinking, feeling, believing, and behaving in alignment with that reality? Incredible. And so for people that might be struggling with that, we are calling out for anybody that would like to come on our show and work with you personally, who might have some limiting beliefs or, you know, who want to work on that, on that system that you mentioned um, to come on the show and to, to work with us and for us to promote that. Right. Yeah. So in relation to that um, self-responsibility and so your, your ideal reality be that your life or your business or your relationships or your finances or whatever already exists. Now that's a trippy concept if you're only hearing it for the first time. But quantum mm. physics has shown that um, infinite possibilities exist at the same time, right? So what does that mean? Well, what it means is if you're not experiencing the ideal reality that you'd like to experience right now, it doesn't mean it's not possible and it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means you're not resonating with that possibility. So what we do at Outlier is we help you identify what that reality is for you, be that business, relationships, whatever. And predominantly for us, it's, it's relationship. Uh, sorry, it's business. And then so we get clear on that. We get clarity and direction around your ideal reality. And then what does it feel like as if it already exists? Because that's the most important part. Because the quickest way for you to resonate with it is to feel the feelings associated with it. But what happens with most people in society is all of their thoughts, some feelings and other beliefs jump in to say why they can't have that reality, e.g. they don't think it's even possible, right? So what we're offering, and we're doing it in two ways. You can either just go straight to our coaching programs, or you can actually volunteer to come on one of our episodes, and we will put you through our process um, to either remove a limiting belief. So if you feel like you've got a limiting belief you want shifted, we can help you remove that very, very quickly. Um, and then, and like example could be fear of success, fear of failure, fear of looking like a fraud, fear of uh, being an imposter, uh, fear of not being good enough is always a huge one. Um, and then there's a whole heap of other ones underneath that you may not even be aware of that are actually stopping you from having your ideal reality right now. And then we have another coaching session, which is related to a business challenge. It's like a hot seat where you'll present a business challenge and we will help you realize that the challenge isn't an external thing, it's actually an internal thing. So once you shift what's going on for you internally, and again, it only takes a couple of minutes, the external changes by default. So you might find it's a mindset thing, it could be a media or a marketing thing, or even a management thing. But what we do at Outlier, we see things differently. Most uh, gurus out there will try to change the physical what we do at Outlier is change the internal. And when we change the internal, the physical change by default. So, Kate, uh, if anyone does want to volunteer for a session or they just want to jump straight to our coaching sessions, 
I'll put the link below for them. But effectively, it's outlier.tv forward slash strategy session. Fill in your information. Um, tell us as much information as you can, and then we'll just assess that and, and see how we can help you best. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to these episodes and helping, you know, helping people um, on, on, our, on, our, on our show um, live so we can really show the power of what we do here. Absolutely. So obviously, what, there's two sides to Outlier. We love sharing these stories of amazing entrepreneurs like Quentin. We've got great stories coming up. Um, but one part is we also help inspire others to do the same. So we have the coaching that can support them. And if you can't afford the coaching and you want to come on the show, we can help you there as well. It'd be great to use your story to then inspire others as well through your transformation. And something I wanted to mention from a, a previous in our, in our conversation today, which is really important, is the meditations that we have available as well. That because you you know we were talking about feeling the feelings and how when we feel the feelings, these this really helps to bring them out. When when we feel them. It, it kind of dissolves them so we have those meditations as well that really help can really help anybody move through those belief, in limiting beliefs absolutely so obviously that's something that is a bit more self-paced but we utilize them a lot in our sessions but if you want to um, check them out i'll put a link below for you as well um, and it's literally something you can do every day that helps you there's two sides to it there's the attract the ideal reality so we get you tuning into those feelings and then there's also the, uh, we call it the fast healing meditation that helps remove feelings you don't want to feel. But the beautiful things about feelings, Kay, is they're actually trying to help us. And so feelings just want to be felt and with them comes profound wisdom. But what most humans do is they have these negative feelings come on and they do everything they can not to feel them, right? So the problem with that is they never get the wisdom that the feelings are trying to help them with. So I use the analogy, it's like a racetrack, right? A car races around the track and there's a wall on the side. The, the wall is like feelings, right? The wall is just there to tell them, there's a wall here, don't come here. So feelings are similar. They've literally, when they come up, a negative feeling, could be fear or anxiety or depression or whatever. It's just telling you, I feel a certain way. And then underneath it, it always has the solution for you providing you feel the feelings associated. But if you don't, we call that suppression. It's called pushing it down. If you suppress, they will always come back to be felt. So you'll keep finding yourself repeating the same old cycles until you finally stop, feel the feelings, learn the lessons associated, and then take actions on the insight that comes up from them that is trying to help you get you to where you want to go. So if you're committed to that and you're really keen to look into that or delve into that, it's something that we are experts at at Outlier and we'd love to help you. Amazing. So Andrew, before we wrap up for today, is there anything else you would like to add from the, the recap or from what we're doing? Yeah, I think like, Kay, for anyone who's new to this, right, sometimes when you don't know what you don't know, what we might be saying doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I would suggest is if you were to close your eyes and maybe just tune in for five seconds and just feel, does what we are saying resonate with you? Do you feel like you've got more to offer? Do you feel like you'd rather be yourself? Do you feel like you want to be a fully expressed version of yourself? Do you feel like society isn't working for you? If so, trust the feeling and if what we're offering can help you or you feel like it might be something, just investigate it. We talked about it earlier, Kay, where Quentin just took a small step, right? Just investigate it, book a strategy session, have a conversation and just see if it works for you. If it doesn't, that's fine. But what I'm saying is when we're often in the new, uh, in the start of a process, we're often unsure. But how do we remove that un uncertainty is to feel the feelings that are really going on for us. So if you feel actually compelled or that you're resonating with what we're talking about, then I'd encourage you to have the courage to take the action on it. Amazing. And I'm really looking forward to speaking with all these outliers and just really inspiring as many people as possible to live the lives that they deserve to live. In a nutshell, okay, that's it, right? We just want, and we're passionate about 
helping people be themselves and turning it into a successful business, which allows them not only to be themselves, but then allows them to impact many other people, be that their customers, their staff, their family, and anyone else that they choose to make a difference to. That's ultimately, if you feel that feeling that I'm talking about, that's ultimately the upside for you that we're trying to get you the outcome for. Mm. And then the butterfly effect that comes from that, mm. which exactly. is so beautiful. Great. Well, I'm Kay Smith and I'm with Andrew McComb and here's to living the outlier life. And we'll see you soon for the next episode. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Kay. We'll see you soon.